All right, guys, Miller here. Just want to do a video on some things that I've had turn up and some things that I'm up to at the moment with my English Civil War stuff. So I've had a package arrive from Meza Minis, uh, which is a highly recommended website to go for, or sponsored website for the Plastic Crack podcast. Um, saw some of the stuff that they've had on there, or they keep recommending it. And not only that, Kev, oh, sorry, Kev, Ken from Miniature Wargaming Warriors put something up for his um, Lancers recently and I just, after seeing that I was like, that's it, sealed the deal, got to get some. So I bought some stuff for the English Civil War. Um, they don't have an English Civil War section, they have a 30 years war section, but um, it's the same thing essentially uh, when it comes to what the guys would be wearing. But so just quickly have a look at some of the stuff. Um, They are some lovely figures. I've been through these already, but I thought I'd show you guys me unpacking them so you can see what they look like. Uh, these are all resin. They do do them in metal, but for some, for some reason, I, I don't know why, I would have thought that it had been more expensive in the resin. But the metals are a bit more expensive. Probably about 20p a figure more expensive, but... Uh, the resin, I haven't had the metal ones to be able to comment, but I think the resin ones seem nicer. So, I mean, this is the only one I've got a problem with. I don't know if you can see that through the packaging. I forget about, but the uh, the resin's splattered out a little bit. The rest of them doesn't seem to be much in the way of cleaning up, other than some of the mould uh, filling holes where the... Uh, inject it into the moulds. There's quite a bit of flashing on there that is going to need to be picked out. Hopefully it all kind of comes away quite easily and it doesn't take away any of the detail around his hand there or around the pummel of the swords. But again, some really, really detailed figures. Um, Nick from... Uh, Nick Games, mate, if you're looking at getting some 30 Years War figures, definitely check out this website, because the figures are amazing. And the same for the rest of you, but I know Nick's really into his 30, uh, 30 Years War stuff. Um, so I've bought uh, 10, is it 10? Yep, yeah, I've got 10 Musketeers. Because they're about... Uh, £1.75 a figure uh, and normally I do units of about 40 um, figures per unit obviously being uh, I think it's what 16 pikemen with the command and then uh, 24 um, musketeers I thought rather than going in because I, d I hadn't got them at the time so I wasn't too sure rather than going straight in and buying loads I would um, just get myself a command, uh, a unit of commanded shot and just make that. And actually that's a lie because I bought a few more bits as well actually. I've got, so I bought 12, or, and 12 men to make up a unit of musketeers. Um, but being commanded shot, I also bought, um, oh god there's so much stuff in here, it's amazing. Uh, I've also bought some infantry for a command base that I want to do because of this fella. So here's your horse, minus his tail, tail comes separate, as well as the um, pistols that would sit on the side of his saddle. But the fella who sits on it, really, really detailed. Again, a little bit of cleaning up on the, uh, the leg there and on his feet. But again, all the swords come separate. Uh, this fella's arm comes separate. And something else I had to notice, especially on the musketeers, and I haven't really checked on the pikemen, which I've also bought, is uh, maybe not on these, but the musketeers. They have a some of them have a feather in their cap, but the feather comes separate. I don't know whether or not that's just because of the way it's cast, but obviously this one comes 
with the feather in his cap. Now, it's less likely that people in the English Civil War would have worn feathers in their caps, just the normal infantrymen, more, more the royalist cavalry or the gentry, because it was a bit more flamboyant. Um, but obviously, I think in the Thirty Years' War, it was more common, maybe, for them to have worn feathers in their he uh, hats. So it gives you that opportunity to, if you didn't want them to have the flamboyancy, other than obviously with this officer. I mean, look at him, he looks fantastic. So I'm going to have a command stand with some other figures that I've got here. Uh, so I'm going to make up all of this stuff in a minute and show it all off together. Built. Uh, obviously I won't stick the rider on, but I'll have, a limit, have him assembled. Um, there's just some really nice figures in here. So I could keep trying to say, but I keep ended up getting stumbled. Uh, I've got a small falconet, which is a light artillery piece, uh, and crew to go with it. And I got two pikemen and a ensign with his flag as well. Um, all that are going to go on a command base. Uh, I'm going to try and make him uh, Lawrence Crawford, uh, who was the uh, commander at Marston Moor, other than um, the other Manchester. I've got a small command base for um, the other Manchester, but. I just wanted to make something a bit nicer. I mean, this guy's the guy firing the cannon. I mean, look at his facial details. Again, swords not attached. But even the... I don't know what you'd call this. The stick with the... Uh, I don't know. What would you call the string? The, the string with the flame on the end. That makes the cannon go bang. That thing. Look how detailed that is. And even the shoes. The detail on the shoes. Wow. I'm going to have a lot of fun painting these up. And it's quite nice because I, th I was sitting here the other day going, wow, uh, Victrix. I've got some amazing stuff. But these, obviously Victrix is plastic and these are resin. But I'm definitely going to have to fill out a whole regiment now. Even if I don't do it for... Uh, the armies that I'm doing it for even if I just do it for even royalists or something like that just to shake things up even if it was just the 30 years war but I definitely definitely I'm definitely going to be making another unit okay so as cluttered as all of that is I'm going to quickly stop the video or it won't be much for you but I'm just going to quickly assemble all of these and show you what they all look like so bear with me Okay, so uh, the, delay, uh, the pause didn't seem so long for you guys, but for me, obviously it's taking a little while to do these. Um, really, really, really impressed with these and how nicely they got, all go together. Sorry, I realise it's a bit juddery on the stand, but um, they fit together so nicely. All the arms and sockets have all got pins and uh, all the swords all just slot straight into a, a little divot. Um, some of the hilts even have little recesses just in the uh, in the legs so they just fit really nicely inside them um obviously like i've said i've got a, a unit of commander shot which are obviously passing by now uh, and then next up is my commander who i will have on a stand with the fellas behind him um so they're all gonna look like he's commanding from the front of one of his regiments and then uh, a small falconet which is very small, uh, and I think I've got too many crew for it now, uh, so I might keep a couple aside. And uh, there's the command for the, the shot. And uh, again, really, really impressed with these figures. Um, definitely some of the nicest figures I've ever had. Uh, I cannot wait to start painting them up. Um, I can't get over how good the detail is. The resin's a really nice quality. Um, and it's quite interesting that in some of the... Um, uh, arm and the weapons like this partisan here the um the inside of it i thought it was resin but it's actually a brass rod that's been placed uh into the mold and then it's been filled with the resin to allow for the the obviously the the spike at the end of the uh the partisan and the same with the um staffs for the the guns themselves again i've got brass rods inside them for strengthening as opposed to the um, the stands for the musketeers, they've uh, 
they've not so they're quite flexible as you can see Ooh, so this one here along the front's a bit more flexed from the rest of them um i don't normally have uh, musket rests on my musketeers but uh as they come with these i thought well i better i better have them on them uh, i won't be cutting them off otherwise they might look a bit odd uh but definitely definitely cannot wait to get these painted up um and we'll definitely be uh, getting some more and making a whole regiment of them. i just got to decide which regiment I want to do. Uh, but yep, I've got one more thing I just want to quickly show you guys. Uh, so bear with me and I'll take these out of the way and get that ready to show you. Okay guys, so uh, earlier on in the week, uh, a comment got made on the Plastic Crack podcast. Um, Dom suggested that I should be challenged to make a star fort for my English Civil War stuff as recently in the news uh, what with all the rain and the flooding that we've had over the country one popped up out of the ground or it got shown off a bit more it was known it was there but it sticks out like a sore thumb now so <clears throat> what we're working on site I've managed to get my hands on quite a bit of Celotex or, or foam and uh, I've started making the uh, the corners for the star fort um, I still need to make the bits that go between them but uh, as you can see uh, these will be two of the four corners the other four oh. the other two out of the four have been carved um, crudely done at the moment I need to find some way of putting them on a board so these will go on to a, a, um, a square base just a little bit larger than this that will end just in line with the edge of this and we'll sort of square off around here uh, which then obviously I can blend this in with some filler and um, for the inside of these I will then also have lollipop sticks or some sort of wood I'm thinking I might get some wooden coffee stirrers same sort of thing you'd like you'd get at McDonald's or Costa or something like that off of eBay I think you can get about a thousand for about four or five quid uh, so and these will make the wall part the parts on the walls uh, and then also for decking of sorts or wooden flooring to stop things like the cannons and stuff from sinking in the mud and obviously the the the, uh, the men obviously you can see how big it's going to be this is uh just a small cannon that i've got and then these are just a unit of musketeers um if i just took the camera up a bit you might see a bit better was a bit blurry um but like i said i'm not one to shy away from a challenge so these will uh i don't know where i'm going to store this either and uh cutting this up last night i made the mistake of cutting it up in the living room and i didn't realize how much mess it would make and it made quite a bit and then when i woke up this morning i woke up to my missus standing there with a hoover and duster telling me to hoover up all the dust because it made quite a bit of dust in the air which I didn't quite realise at the time um, so there's quite a bit of cleaning to do this morning sorry, not in the camera, I've got a new stand so it's a bit flexy um, still shaking but yep, yeah, so this is one of the four that I've made already um, I've just got the partition walls to go in and then that's it But sorry, you might hear the cat in the background um, but yeah, so that's it for now uh, keep an eye out on this uh, for the Star Fort as well and also keep an eye out on the musketeers and stuff that I've picked up from Mezzas Miniatures um, but yeah so that's it for now uh, bye for now